What you and I are witnessing tonight is the incredible innovation in reference to the application in regard to wound healing. We're talking the topical use of something commonly referred to as DIM, otherwise 3,3-thiendolimethane, but we'll refer to it as DIM because it's slightly easier to say. But what DIM did, which was quite intriguing, is it tend to basically break down the biofilm of two particularly very nasty bacteria, bacteria which are very problematic in healing wounds. In this case, Acinetobacter uh, bumani, which was a nightmare for troops when they were coming back injured from overseas, especially uh, Iraq or Afghan, Afghanistan, and also Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So what happens is these particular bacteria, uh, they impact the wound. So making it very difficult and sometimes becomes very, very problematic as time proceeds. And antibiotics have a very, very, very difficult um, uh, way of, uh, I should say, uphill battle in fighting these bacteria. But what the researchers did is they made a little solution, took the diendomethylene, uh, and diendolimethane, diendolimethane, applied it to the wounds. And what ended up happening? It ended up dislodging the bacteria from the biofilms. It eroded the biofilms. And when the biofilms became eroded, it kind of like took the bacteria away from its hideout or stronghold. Then here comes the antibiotic to finish your job. Even though we're about to look at a chart that showed the DIM did a better job than even the antibiotic and the DIM combined. DIM worked better on its own in reference to uh, wound healing. And we'll look at that chart in a second. It's kind of actually quite amazing. But let's get right into the research as follows. Again, to reiterate, we were talking the topical application of 3,3-thiendolimethane. So this is just amazing stuff. So again, just like, just like a wound cream. To proceed, could a phytochemical derived from vegetables like broccoli be the answer to antibiotic-resistant pathogens? The phytochemical 3,3-thiendolimethane DIM successfully broke down the biofilms, protecting two different pathogens, including Acinetobacter bumani and Pseudomonas aeruginosa enabling the eradication 65 to 7% of the time, respectively. Combined with antibiotics, remember it dislodged it from its hideout, left it vulnerable to the attack of the antibiotics in simplistic terms. Because the biofilm was gone, it jumped to 94%. Additionally, when they introduced DIM into an infected wound, it sped up the healing process significantly, the team found. Now let's look at the charts. Our first chart, number one, we're gonna look at the Acinetobacterium bacterium, uh, Bobani, sorry, and uh, the, the Pseudomonas agrogranosa. You see exactly how basically it takes the biofilm, I should say, and breaks it down. Simple enough. Another chart, again, primarily looking at the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, you can see from the graphics how effective it is in reference to that. And then they combine it with the antibiotic. And so think of it like this way. It, the DIM itself, the biofilm, it's not really killing it like an antibiotic. Again, it's evicting it, so it doesn't stick around, so to say, proceed. And then check out number three. Now, I cut out the wound uh, pictures because I don't want to shock anybody with the wounds, but look at chart B, graphic B. Look at the DIM itself, how it accelerated the wound healing just through topical application. Now, that is pretty amazing altogether, but let us proceed as follows. Moreover, now we're gonna to go to the full study. A recent study showed that DIM has anti-biofilm activity on candida albicans and acne-causing bacteria based on its anti-biofilm properties. We're trying to say is basically a lot of people take diendolimethane, uh, you know, in, by capsule per se, uh, for other various ailments, where it has been shown to be effective in uh, basically helping with uh, breaking down those biofilms as well. Based on its anti-biofilm properties, which it affect diverse strains of bacteria. The results of the study suggest that DIM is potentially suitable for attenuating a wide range of bacterial infections. A 10-day treatment of infected full thickness wounds in porcine pigs, of which DIM treatment was most effective. Now, I'm gonna show you the formula that they used. And even though it was 10 days, they only like applied it like three days or so, uh, a week per se. Uh, with DIM treatment was most effective, it showed complete knockdown of mature uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa biofilm and augmented healing. Further explorations of such novel applications are needed in terms of dosage and toxicity. 
you know, stem. Uh, resistance gaining and methods of development and evaluating the success of this treatment strategy. Such studies will reveal the extent to which this novel approach can be exploited to prevent, inhibit, and destroy the ability of infectious bacteria to form biofilms and as such bring us close to eliminate biofilm related infections. All right, here is the formulation that they used. And you can see how they used it in the application in the porcine model. If you want to go to the full study and look at the wounds and how effective DIM was in reference to those wounds at 10 days, you're more than welcome to. Uh, obviously, I'll make sure the link is there. But this is an incredibly valuable tool because it's something that you kind of want to keep in your zombie apocalypse war chest because it is an application of a substance which is not too difficult to come by and can yield tremendous benefit in the case of basically breaking down biofilms from nasty bacteria, per se. Again, future studies have to be conducted, but at least this is very promising. And put this in the cabinet, remember a long time ago from Nottingham, University of Nottingham, uh, Bald's Eye Solve, which is the alchemical text, I'll link for that as well too, for people that like to uh, uh, explore the history of certain medicines, which kind of rival today's antibiotics. So you get that picture. But in any case, incredible, incredible research. The link will be there. We're talking topical, topical, topical application of dim dindoli methane. So basically what we're looking at is very simple, very effective. This is the formula they use, I showed you earlier, uh, but it can save an incredible, incredible amount of hardship from individuals if this gets incorporated hopefully sooner than later in our medical community or at least further trials to basically explore its better use and application. Maybe you can improve the formula if the formula needs improving. But there it is, dim from broccoli. Again, bro gratitude, well not from broccoli, it could be from you know, any source. But to reiterate, dim commonly known to come out from broccoli. I don't wanna get into the scientific debate, but incredible gratitude for the innovation of the researchers. This will uh, make a lot of lives better. And also, too, I am humbled that you watch this information. It empowers. Catch you all next time. See you there. Bye.